Good morning, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and the subject today we are studying is Cambridge O Levels Mathematics Syllabus D. We call this D Maths 4024. Today we have set our hearts to solve a uh, paper two of this subject, and for this purpose, we have selected October November 2017 to do paper. This paper two belongs from the zone two. The time allowed for this paper is 2 hours and 30 minutes. In this paper, the calculator is allowed. In this video, I'm going to present you the solution of this paper. I hope that you will learn from this video and this video will be very helpful to you. So let's start today's paper. So here we go. So the first, this is the question which is showing up on your screen uh we have uh, october november 2017 and it's uh, two two paper two hours 30 minutes the total marks for this paper are 100 okay so let's start okay okay so wait a minute okay so now it's good Okay, question number one is A part is showing up on your screen. He says, Sarah buys a new car. The cash price of the car is $4,500. She can pay for the car using option A or option B. Option A is pay one by fifth of the cash price, then 12 months payments of $340. Option B is pay 12% of the cash price, then 24 monthly payments of $195. Which option is cheaper? It's a four mark question. So we have to decide that which option is cheaper. So I will calculate how much money is in the, in the option A and how much money you have to pay in the option B. In the option A, you have to pay one by fifth of the $4,500 plus 12 months, uh, 12 installments of $340 of each month. So it will be one by five multiply 4,500 plus 12 into $340 and this will be $4,980. In the option B, you will have to pay 12% of the cash price. So it will be 12%, 12 by 100 of the 4,500 plus there are 24 monthly payments of $195 plus 24 multiply $195. So it will be $5,220. So which one is cheaper? When you subtract uh, uh, 4980 from 5220, you get $240. It means that the option A is cheaper by $240. This is the marking scheme showing up. So I hope you understand. This is the right answer, sir. Question number one, it's B part. He says, uh, uh, Sarah's car used 5.2 liters of petrol for each 100 kilometers she drives. Petrol costs $0.85 per liter. Sarah drives to 40 kilometer. Calculate the cost of the petrol used for this journey and give your answer correct to the nearest sense. I'm going you to use the method of proportionality. Uh, with the 5.2 liters, you can cover 100 kilometers for 240 kilometers, how many liters of the petrols, the petrol is needed. Then I know the price of the petrol, then I can tell how much is the, okay, so petrol and distance, 5.2 liters, you can cover 100 kilometers when you have to cover 240 kilometers, how many, how many liters of the petrol are needed. So it will be 5.2 divided by X equals to 100 divided by 240, cross multiply here. So you will get X is equals to 240 multiply 5.2 divided by 100. So that will be 12.48 liter. So you need 12.48 liter of petrol. Now the cost and the petrol, I'm again going to use the method of proportionality. Uh, 0 0.85 dollar is for one liter, for 12.48 liter, how much money is needed? So the X will be equal to 0 0.85 multiplied 12.48 and that will be 10.61 dollars. So totally she needs 10.61 dollars for that journey. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. Our answer is right. This, this is the solution and here we go. 
So we are here on question number one. It's C part. He says Sarah pays a total of $322 for her car insurance. This total is made up of a basic charge plus 15% sales tax. Calculate the amount of sales tax that Sarah pays. Okay. So we don't know how much is the original money. Uh, okay. So what I will do, I will suppose that is uh, the basic charge is X and on it, we have 15% of the on X and then you have total $322, which she paid. So I will take the LCM on this side, uh, on the left side. So you will have 100X plus 15X divided by 100. So that is 322. So it will be 115X by 100 equals to 322. So X will be equal to 322 multiplied 100 divided by 115. So the X value will be $280. So the basic charge is $280. On this basic charge, there was 15% tax. So 15% of the 280 will be $42. So the chart that because they asked us to how much tax they have paid. So the $42 is the tax. $42 is the tax. So they can see this is our answer. So we are done with the question number uh, one. So let's have a look. Okay. So Let me, let me, let me, wait a minute. So that was how the question number one is done. Okay, so now we are going to the next part. That is question number two. A company asks their employees how long they took to travel to work one day. The table summarizes the times for 120 employees. So here we have time and the frequency is given from zero to 20 minutes, 12, 12 workers, and 20 to 40 minutes, 28 workers, 40 to 60 minutes, 45 workers, 60 to 80, 22 workers, 80 to 113 workers. So they say cumulative, uh, complete the cumulative frequency table below. So less than zero, zero, less than 20, 12 workers, less than 40 will be 12 plus 28, and less than 60 will be 12 plus 28 plus 45. Less than, uh, uh, you know, this is 80. It will be 12 plus 28 plus 45 plus 22. And less than 100 will be 12 plus 28 plus 45 plus 22 plus 13. So this is how we will complete that table. Let me show you. I have completed that table. And so you will have 12 here. Here you will have 40. Here you will have 85. Here you will have 107. And here you will have 120. So this is how you find the cumulative frequency. You add up the frequencies. And on the upper boundary of the each class, we write that cumulative frequency. So this table is completed like this. So let me show you the marking scheme. Yeah, this is the right thing. Okay, so now in the next part, they say on the, here we have a grid. On the grid, draw smooth cumulative frequency curve to represent these results. So here the times are represented. Here the cumulative frequencies are written. On the upper boundary of the time, we are going to uh, put the dots for the cumulative frequency. And then we will join them and we will make a curve. So I have done this. Let me show you. Okay. So at zero, it is zero. At, tw at 20, it is 12. At 40, uh, at 40, it is 40. At 60, it is 85. At uh, 80, it is 107. At 100, it is 120. You can see this black line. Then I join them with this curve. This curve is called smooth cumulative frequency curve. I hope you understand. This is the marking scheme. This is how it is done. Okay, now they ask you the B part of the question number two. They ask us uh, use your curve to estimate the median time. If you want to find out the median, uh, you will find the 50% of the cumulative. Our total, uh, our cumulative last uh, point is of 120. So I will take 50% of this and uh, let me show you. I will take 50% of this and here you can see 50% of the 120 is 60. I will look for this 60 on the y-axis and from there I will go to my, cumulative. here you have the 60, then I will go to my cumulative frequency curve. From there I will go down on the x-axis, I will check what is the number here. 
So this is 42, 44, 46, 47. So 47 is the right answer, sir. So the median score from the cumulative frequency curve, I can tell you it is 47. From 47 to 49. So our answer is right. I hope you understand. Then in the B, question number two, B and the second part, they say find the interquartile range for the times. Okay, so if you want to find out the interquartile range, you have to find out the third quartile and you have to find out the first quartile. Third quartile is also called the upper quartile and the first quartile is also called the lower quartile. For the uh, third quartile, we, we, we find 75% of the total cumulative so we will find 75% of the 120 and that is 90. I will go on my graph. I will check where is the 90. From there, I will go to my graph. 90, I've checked on the y-axis. Then when it intersects the graph, I will check what is the value uh, at the x-axis. This is approximately 63. And this is your Q3. Q3. Okay. Hopefully you understand. Then I will find the 25% of the 120, that is 30. I will check 30 on the y-axis. Here you have that 30. From there, I will go to the graph. When it intersects the cumulative frequency curve, I check what is the y value, x value there. That is called Q1. So, and that is 32, I think. 34, sorry. Sorry, it's 34. Every small square on the x-axis is representing 2. So, it's 34. So the Q3 is 63 and the Q1 is 34. The interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So it will be 63 minus 34. Our answer is 29. So the interquartile range is 29. They say from 28 to 32. So our answer is right. This is how this is done. And this is from where you have found the values. So this is the second part. Okay, now question number one, and it's C part. He says, calculate an estimate of the mean time taken for the employees to travel to work. So we want he wants us to find out the mean. If you want to find out the mean, you have to take the mid value because here you can see the classes are given from 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 80 to 100. So these classes are given. If you want to find out the mean of this data, what you have to do, you have to find the mid values of that data. For each class, you will find the mid value. So for each class, how you find the mid value, you will add up the boundaries and whatever the answer you get, you divide it with the two. So for example, zero plus 20 is 20. You divide the 20 with the two, you get 10. So the mid value of this first class is 10. The mid value of this class will be 30. The mid value of this class will be 50. The mid value of this class will be 70. The mid value of this class will be 90. Then you multiply the mid value that is known as X with the frequency, you will get the FX. I have done this, let me show you. So on your screen, you can see the X values, which are, which represents the mid values of the class, uh, each class. So 10, 30, 50, 70, and 90, the, their frequencies are 12, 28, 45, 22, 13. So I will multiply the mid values with the frequency so, for example, 10 multiplied 12, that is 120, 30 multiplied 28, that is 1840, 50 multiplied 45, that is 2250, 2, 2, 70 multiplied 22, that is 1540, and 90 multiplied 13, that is 1170. Now, the mean value is summation fx divided by the summation f. Summation fx means add up all the fx values that is summation fx divided by the add up all the frequencies and that is summation f so when you add up all the fx uh, in the the sum is 5920 and the sum of the frequencies is 120 when you divide 5920 with the 120 you get 49.3 so our mean is 49.3 49.3 so you can see 49.3 is the right answer sir and uh, this is my solution. Hopefully you understand. Question number three is coming up on your screen. <clears throat> Anaya makes t-shirts. The matrix M shows the number of t-shirts of different types she make in one week. So here you have uh, the row representing, the first row is representing the men. The second row, row is representing women. And the first column represents small size. The second column represents the medium size. The third column represents the larger size. 
So 10 small shares for men, 25 medium shares for men, 30 large shares for men, 20 small shares for women, 40 medium sized shares for women, and 25 large shares for women. Anaya sells all of these t-shirts to a shop. She charges $5 for each small t-shirt, $6 for each medium t-shirt, and $8 for each large t-shirt. Represent these, these amounts in a three by one column matrix. Three by one column matrix mean that uh, this, this represents the uh, number of rows and this represents the number of Colors, okay, so there should be three rows and one column. So you will write five downstairs, six downstairs, eight. So this is how it is done. So this is five, six, and eight, and this is the, my answer. So you can see five, six, and eight. This is how it is done. Okay, now he says work out P, which is equals to M multiplied N. So the M will be multiplied with the N. So here we have, you multiply the M value with the N. So uh, you will see that from here, I'm going to take, uh, let me, okay. So from here, I will take the row, I will take these rows and it will be multiply with this column. So 10 multiply 5 plus 25 multiply 6 plus 30 multiply 8, and that will be 440. Four, mm -hmm. Then this row will multiply. And you know, this row is uh, uh, 20 multiply 5 plus 40 multiply 6 plus 25 multiply 8, and that will give you 540. So 440 divided by the 540, this is my answer. 440 divided by 540, which is right, sir. Okay, then he says, uh, in the third, second part, he says, explain what the element in the matrix P represents. So in the matrix P, the, it represents the revenue, the money she got by selling men's shirts. And 540 represents the revenue or the money or the earning that she got from uh, selling the uh, women shirts. So the amount Anaya makes from men's t-shirts and women's t shirt So you can see our answer is right. Okay. Here we have the shopkeeper sells all sizes of men's t-shirts at $10 each. He sells all sizes of women's t-shirts at $9.90 .90 each. Workout. So we have to multiply these two matrices. So this row, this row here, this row will multiply, this row is going to be multiplied with the columns here. So you will multiply the row with the column and very easy. So 10 multiply 10 plus 9 multiply 9.5 multiply 20. Then you will have uh, 10 multiply 25 plus 9.5 multiply 40. Then you will have 10 multiply 30 uh, plus 9.5 multiply 25. So you will have 290 plus 630, uh, sorry, 290, 630, and uh, you will have uh, 3537.5. So this is the money they have made. This is our answer. The answer is right. Okay, he says work out the percentage profit the shopkeeper makes when he sells all of the t-shirts. Okay. The cost is uh, 440 plus 540, that is $980, that is the total cost. And their sale is 290 plus 630 plus 537.5. So it is 400 and, sorry, $1,457.5. So the profit they have made is uh, we actually have to tell a person profit. Person profit is profit divided by the cost multiply 100. So 1457.5 minus 980 and equals to multiply 100 divided by 980 and that is 48.7. So their profit is 48.7%.
So, my dear students, uh, we are done with the question number three. This is the last part of that. Now we are on the question number four. He says the triangle A is shown on the grid. So here we have a triangle A which is shown on the grid. He says triangle A is mapped onto triangle B by a translation of uh, 7 minus 5. You know the translation means to move in a straight line. So he has uh, told us that uh, how much you have to move on the x along the x-axis and how much you have to move along the y-axis. On the x-axis, you will have to move seven steps to the right side, towards the right side, and minus five on the y means that you have to move downstairs, downwards uh, five steps. Okay, so seven steps to the right and then five steps down. So let me show you, I have drawn the, he says draw the triangle B. Okay, so I will move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five. Put a dot here. Then this point we move one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five. Put a dot here. Then this point we move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five. So this is you. This is the matrix. This is the triangle B. I hope you understand that we have moved seven steps to the right and then five steps down. This is from where I got these numbers. These numbers were represented on the column vector for the translation here, seven minus five. So this is your triangle B. Hopefully you understand. This is the answer for the question number B. Okay, in the second part, he says the triangle A, the triangle A is mapped onto triangle C by an enlargement of the scale factor minus two. And the center of the enlargement is minus one comma two. Draw and label the triangle C on your grid. So we have to do the enlargement. The center of the enlargement is minus one comma two. So minus one comma two. This is the center of the enlargement. Okay. Now, scale factor is minus 2. If the scale factor is minus 2, I will check the, these three vertices. I will join this vertex with this center of the alignment and prolong it. And because the scale factor is negative, so its image will be on the opposite side to that of the, of the center of enlargement. Where the object is, the image will be on the opposite side for this purpose, I will join this vertex with this center of enlargement and prolong it. This here, check its distance, multiply it with the two and move it on the opposite side. So you will get this dot. In the same way, join it with the center of enlargement, check how much is the length, then multiply it with the minus two. So you will move from here, you will start counting and you will move that distance on the opposite side. So we put a dot here. Join this point with the center of the enlargement and prolong it. Check how much is the distance of this point from the center of the enlargement and then multiply that distance with the two. You can say minus two. From here, I will count that distance. So one and two, put a dot here. Then I will join these points with each other and this will be the C. This will be the C. So hopefully, okay, now we are going to the next question, the question number, and this is question number four. We are done with the, okay, so due to the internet, uh, you know, internet, internet always takes a breath, so he has taken a breath. <laughs> Internet was up and down. Triangle P is shown on the grid. So here you have a triangle P. He says the stretch S is represented by this matrix 3001. The, the triangle, the triangle P is mapped onto triangle Q by the stretch S on the grid draw and label the triangle Q. I will take I will take all the three vertices of this triangle 
and I will first of all write this matrix, then I will multiply it with the object and I will get, get automatically the image. So let me show you how this is done. So you, as you can see here, the matrix uh, for the stretch is given, that is 3001. And the, I will note down the coordinates of this point, one, one coordinate of this point, this is two comma three, and this is three comma one. You multiply them, and you get the answer three, one, six, three, nine, one. Then I will plot these points. This is the X, this is the Y of that point. This is the X, this is the Y, this is the X, this is the Y. So I will plot them here, and then I will join them. So you can see I got this triangle, which is the, which is the image of the P. Now the question is, uh, describe fully the stretch S, okay. So Y axis is the invariant line sketch, sketch factor is three. How do I know it's three? For example, when I take this side, I measure it with this side, I get three. For example, this side, when I divide with this side, I get three. For example, I take this side, I divide it with this side, I get three. So the stretch factor is three. And the invariant line is if you prolong this line and this line, where they intersect, then prolong this line and this line where they intersect with each other. And join those uh, with the with the line. So where these this side and this line side prolonged will intersect each other. And this side and this side prolonged where they intersect each other, join those two points. And you will see that the invariant line will be the y-axis. So this is a stretch whose stretch factor is three and its uh, invariant line is the y-axis. This is no more in your syllabus, in the mathematics syllabus, but at that time it was in the syllabus. So we are done with the question number four. Now we are going to the next question and that is question number five. So, okay, so we are on the question number five. It's a part, he says, express as a single fraction in its simplest form. Here we have two algebraic fractions. They are subtracting from each other. So what we'll do, we will take the LCM of the denominators. Both the denominators will come in the LCM. So we will have, uh, let me show you, uh, here we have. So, okay, so both of them will come in the LCM. So upstairs you will have four bracket X plus one minus five bracket X minus two. When you open it, it will be four X plus four minus five X plus uh, 10. So downstairs it will remain as it is. So upstairs you will have minus x plus 14, downstairs you will have x minus two, and in the other bracket you will have x plus one. So the final answer is 14 minus x, and in denominator you will have x minus two and x plus one. So this is question number five, and it's uh, a part. So it is good, this was the question number four, b part, first part, second part, and this is question number five and it's a part. This is how it is done. And we go question number five and it's a B part. He says solve. Solve means to find the value of the variable. So you will have two X bracket X plus one equals to three bracket four minus X. So this will be two X squared plus two X equals to 12 minus three X. So let me show you this is how it is done. So you will have 2x squared plus 2x equals to 12 minus 3x. So you will have 2x squared plus 2x 
bring them to the other side, the right thing, right? Or the things on the right side, the terms on the right side, bring them on the left side. So you will have plus 3x minus 12 equals to 0. So you will have 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals to 0. Uh, so now I'm going to do the midterm breaking. So what I will do, I will I will multiply these extreme terms. So you will have 24. The, write the factors of the 24. They are 1 into 24, 2 into 12, 3 into 8, 4 into 6. Because here with the third term, we have negative sign. So I will subtract. So from subtraction, I'm looking for that pair, which by subtraction will give me plus 5x. So that pair is 8 and 3. They, when you subtract them, you get 3, uh, you get 5. So with the larger number, I will write plus sign. And with the smaller number, I will write minus sign. So you will have 2x square. So here you will have 2x square minus 3x plus 8x minus 12 equals to 0. So take 2x common from the first two terms and uh, 4 common from the last two terms. So you will have x bracket 2x minus 3 bracket close plus 4 bracket 2x minus 3 bracket close equals 0. So take 2x minus 3 bracket from both the terms common. So in, in the second bracket, you will have x plus 4 equals 0. So these two brackets, they are multiplying with each other and their answer is 0. So either the first bracket is 0 or the second bracket is 0. So 2x minus 3 equal to 0. So the x will be equal to 3 by 2. x plus 4 is equal to 0. So the x will be equal to minus 4. So we got two values of the x. One is minus 4. The other one is 3 by 2, which is 1 whole 1 by 2. Let's check. Uh, which also means 1.5. Minus 4 and 1.5. Minus 4 and 1.5. 3 by 2 means 1.5. So this is how this is done. Hopefully you understand. Okay, question number five, and it's a C part. He says, Anil and Yasmin buy some pens and notebooks from the same shop. Anil buys three pens and three, two notebooks for $4.80. Yasmin buys five pens and four notebooks for $9. Form a pair of simultaneous equations to represent this information. Suppose the price of the pen is P cents and the price of the notebook is uh, two uh, N cents. So you will have three P and plus two N equals to 480. I'm taking the values in cents and five P plus four N equals to 900. So let me show you. So here we go. 3p plus 2n is equal to 480 cents. I'm taking the things in cents. 5p plus 4n will be equal to 900 cents. So then we have to solve them simultaneously. So very easy. Uh, let me show you. So what I will do, I will multiply the first equation with the 2, and then I will subtract the second equation from it. So you can see here, I have done 2 bracket start, 3p plus 2n bracket close minus bracket uh, 5p plus 4n bracket close equals to 2 whatever you have done in the left side same thing you will do on the right side so 2 multiply 480 multiply minus 900 so uh, you see i have made the denominator sorry the coefficients of the n same and then i have subtracted them so the n will be eliminated so you will have 6p plus 4n minus 5p minus 4n is equal to 960 minus 900 so this and this and this will be cancelled. So you are left with the uh, 6p minus 5p is p. And on the right side, you have 60 cents. So the pen is of 60 cents. Now you got the value of the uh, p. Just put that value into any equation. Put it in the first equation. Put it in the second equation. Does not matter. So I'm going to put it in the first equation. So 3 in the, in the place of the p, I will substitute 60. So 3 into 60 plus 2n is equal to 480. 180 plus 2n is equal to 480. So the 2n will be equal to 480 minus 180. So 2n will be equal to 300. So the n will be equal to 300 divided by 2, and that will be 150. So the price of the notebook is 150 cents. I will convert them into dollars because in the answer, they have used the unit dollars. So 60, the pen is of 60 cents divided with the 100. So it is 0 0.6 dollars. The notebook is in 150 cents, so divide it with 100, so it is 1.5 dollars. So let's check. So you can see that our answers are right. 
question number five at C second part, first part is also right. So this is how this is done. Hopefully you understand. Okay, so we are going to the question number six is showing up on your screen. Here he says, uh, question number six is A part. He says, we have a universal set and X such that X is an integer and the X is equals to and greater than 10, equals to and less than 20. So that means X is equal to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. A is X such that X is an odd number. So from this universal set, the odd numbers will be 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. And B set is X such that X is a multiple of five. The multiple of five here will be 10, 15, and 20. Uh, question number six, A first part is find the number of members, this small n means uh, the number of members in the A intersection B. So we are looking the common uh, portion in A and B. So, so we will see what is common between A and B. The common between A and B is only if you can see 15. So there is one member in this set. So there is only one member in this set. So our answer is right. This is how it is done. Okay. Uh, question number six, A, and it's the second part. He says A complement union B. So A complement means uh, the members which are in the uh, which are in the A, but not in the, which are not in the A, means. This is universal set minus A. So the members which are in the universal set, but are not in A. So they are 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So these are the A complement. Then their question is A complement union B. So A complement union B means that you will join all the members of the A complement and the B, but do not repeat any member. So A complement union B will be 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, and 20. 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, and 20 is the right answer, sir. Okay, then in the third part, he says a number R is chosen at random from the universal set. Find the probability that the R belongs to A union B. Okay, so first of all, I need to find out A union B. And the A union B uh, will be, A union B is 10, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 20. So how many members are there? There are seven members. Or how, how many members are in the universal set? There are 11 members. So the probability of getting a number R, which belongs from the A union B, will be 7 divided by 11. So this is how you find that probability. 7 by 11 is the right answer, sir. Okay, so we are going to the next part. Here we have, it, it says that uh, it's the B part of the question number six. In a survey, 40 people were asked what they did, what they had read that day. A total of 10 people had read a book. A total of 24 people had read a newspaper. 14 people had read neither a book nor a newspaper. By drawing a Venn diagram or otherwise, find the number of people who had read both a book and a newspaper. So first of all, I'm going to draw a Venn diagram to represent this information. So let me show you. Okay. So, uh, so suppose uh, there are X number of people who have read. Uh, first of all, I have drawn this rectangle. In this rectangle, I have drawn these two circles. Some portion of this circle is overlapping with each other. So th that overlapping portion means the people who read book and newspaper both. So suppose they are X. The total people in the book are 10. So X is already here. So here I will write 10 minus X. In the newspaper, total people who read the newspaper, they are 24. The X is already here. So this portion will be 24 minus X. The people who have read nothing is 14. So when you add them up, so it is 10 minus X plus X plus 24 minus X plus 14, the total will be 40. 
So now you will have 48 minus x equals to 40. So minus x will be equals to 40 minus 48. So the minus x will be equals to minus 8. So x will be equals to 8. So, so you see, uh, by drawing a Venn diagram, I find a number of people who, who had read both a book. So they are basically asking you to find out the people who have read both book and newspaper. So that is x. So the answer is 8. The answer is 8. That answer is right. So we are good. Okay. So the next part, he says, two of the 10 people who had read a book are selected at random. Work on the probability that they had both read a book and a newspaper. So the total people are 10, uh, the people who read the book. And from there, they are selecting. And the people who had read, so from the people who have or read the book from them they are selecting they are 10 people and the the two people which uh, are selected uh, should be from the overlapping portion who have read both the book and the newspaper they are eight people so total people are 10 so the people who have read both the things uh, are eight so because we are going to select two people so it will be eight by ten multiply seven by nine you see the total has decreased by when you selected the second person, the total has decreased by one and that thing has also decreased by one. So eight by 10 multiplied by seven by nine. I hope you understand the probability 28 by 45. 28 by 45 is the answer, sir. 28 by 45 is the right answer, sir. This is my solution. Hopefully you understand. Now we are going to the next question. That is question number Seven, the variable x and y are connected by the equation y is equal to 3 plus x minus x squared by 2. Some corresponding values of x and the y are given in the table. Uh, complete the table. So here, what is the when the value of the x is minus 3, what is the value of the y? So, and when the value of the x is 5, what is the value of the y? So very simple, you just have to replace these values in that table uh, in the place of x whatever is in okay so here you can see in the place of x i will substitute with minus 3 and i will get the value of the y that will be minus 4.5 i will substitute the value of the x as 5 in that equation and you can do i have as you can see i've done this here and i will check what's the value of the y and that will be minus 4.5 so both y values are minus 4.5, minus 4.5. The answers are right. So this is this is how it is done. And here we have, and hopefully you understand this question number seven is a part. Uh, so the question seven is a part is done. Now we go to the next part. And in the next part, they say uh, the table, complete the table. We are done with this. Using a scale, he says using a, using a scale of two centimeter to one unit to draw horizontal axis from four minus three to five. The X values are going from minus three to five. And two centimeter will be representing one. And using a scale of one centimeter to one unit, draw a vertical y-axis. And the y on the y-axis, uh, minus five and five, okay? So draw the graph of y is equals to three plus x minus x squared by two for x values from minus three to five. Okay, so very simple. We are going to draw this. Let me show you the grid which I have chosen. So the grid I am going to draw is here. So because the x is three steps here and five steps here, so each two centimeter represents one on the x-axis. So one, two, three, four, five, minus one, two, minus three. On the y-axis, one centimeter represents one. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six. Downstairs, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. Then I have to plot at minus 3, minus 4.5, and at minus 2, minus 1, at, uh, at minus 1, 
uh, minus uh, 1.5, I put this dot. At 0, you will have 3. At 1, you have 3.5. At 2, you have 3. At 3, you have uh, 1.5. At 4, you have minus 1. At 5, you have uh, minus 4.5. So these two dots. Then I will join them with a smooth curve. So hopefully you understand the grid. Hopefully you understand how we have plotted uh, those dots on the grid. And then we have joined them with a smooth curve. So then they ask us to, by drawing a tangent, uh, by drawing a tangent uh, of the curve. Okay, so this is the question. It's third part. By drawing a tangent, estimate the gradient of the curve at 3,1.5. At 3,1.5, I will at this is the 3,1.5. So what I will do, I will draw a tangent here. So you can see at 3.5, I put a dot here and I have drawn this red line, which is the tangent. Tangent is a line which join, which touch that uh, curve only at that point. Then what I will do, I will take two points on this tangent and I will note down their coordinates. So I I have noted down 1,5 and 5, comma minus two, this point and this point. So take two points on that tangent and then apply the formula for the gradient. The formula for the gradient is y2 minus y1 divided by the x2 minus x1. So it will be minus two minus five divided by five minus one. And so you will have minus seven by four. So it is minus 1.75, minus 1.75. So, <clears throat> It says from minus 2.4 to minus 1.5. So our answer is in this range. So our answer is right. Hopefully you understand how this is done. Okay, now we are going to the fourth part. The points of the intersection of the graph y equals to 3 plus x minus x squared by 2 and the line y equals to k are the solutions of this equation. This equation, this is 10 and 10 plus 2x minus x squared equals to 0 find the value of the k. So this is the equation. This is the equation whose graph we have already drawn there. This is that curve. So I will, uh, from that on the left side, I will try to make the, uh, the equation of the curve. This equation is given to us. This is the equation of the curve whose graph I have drawn. So I'll write this equation here. And then from this, on the left side of this, I will try to make this equation whose graph is already there. So this is 10 plus 2x minus x squared equals 0. So I will divide both the sides with the 2. So you will have 5 plus x minus x squared by 2. From this 5, I will take 2 so that 3 will be remaining here and that 2 will go on the other side. So I have, my, I have subtracted 2 on both the sides. So you will have uh, 5 minus 2 plus x minus x squared by 2 equal to 0 minus 2. So 3 plus x minus x squared by 2 equals to minus 2. So now you see this is the equation of that curve whose graph is there. The left On the left side, I have made that equation. And whatever is on the right side, that will be equals to y. That is the equation of the line. So y is equals to minus 2. They said that it will be y equals to k. We say y is equals to minus 2. So the k value is basically minus 2. So the value of the k is minus 2. You can see this answer. Our answer is right, sir. k is equal to minus 2. Hopefully you understand. It's a little tricky thing. By drawing the line y is equal to k on your graph, find the solution of this equation. So y equals to 2 line I will draw on the graph. You can see here. So y equals 2 is this horizontal line. y equals to minus 2. Sorry, I said 2. It's y equals to minus 2. So when you draw this line, so wherever it cuts your main graph, you check what is the x value of that point of intersection. So this value is approximately, I think, minus 2.3, I think. And this value is um, 4.3 or maybe 4.4. So let me check. I have noted down there. So one value of the x is minus 2.3 and the other value is 4.35. So our answers are right. So this is how this is done. How you do it, you, you have drawn this line. You have checked the point of intersection of the curve and this line. And you have checked the x 
coordinate of the point of intersection. Okay, now uh, we are done with this. Okay, so we are going to the next part. Here we have, he says, this is a sketch. This is the B part. This is a sketch of the graph y is equals to p a raised to power x, where a is greater than 0. The graph passes through the points 0, 0,4 and 2, 36. Write down the value of the p. If you want to find out the value of the p, very simple. In the place of x and y, substitute these, these two points, uh, this, these coordinates. So in the place of x, put 0. In the place of the y, put 4 you will automatically get the value of the p. So you see y is equal to p a raised to power x. In the place of the y put 4, in the place of the x put 0. So you will have 4 equals to p bracket start a raised to power 0. a raised to power 0 is 1. So 4 is equal to p multiply 1. So p will be equal to 4. So now we know the value of the p. Then their question is find the value of the a. Then their question is find the value of the a. So now I will put this uh, 2 comma 3 6 in the place of x I will put uh, 2 and in the place of uh, y I will put 36. Uh, so that equation is y and we know p value is 4. So y will be equals to p a raised to power x. So y is equals to 4 a raised to power x. In the place of y I will put 36 in the place of x I will put 2. So you will have 36 divided by 4, that is 9. So a square is equal to 9. Take square root on both the sides. So a will be equal to 3. So the a value will be 3. So p value is 4. The value of the a is 3. Now their question is, uh, the graph passes through the point 4 comma q. Find the value of the q. So in that equation, in the place of x, I will put 4 in the place of the y i will put q so we know that that equation was uh, y is equals to p a raised to power x in the place of y i will put q and in the place of p its value was 4 in the place of a the a value was 3 and in the place of x i will put uh, in the place of y i will put q in the place of x i will put 4 Okay, so 3 raised to power 4, that means 3 multiplied 3 multiplied 3 multiplied 3, that is 81. So Q will be equal to 4 multiplied 81, that is 324. So the value of the Q will be 324. 324 is the right answer, sir. So let me reduce the size. So you can see this whole B part of the question 7 together. I hope that this question, uh, you are able to understand how this is done. Okay, so here we go, question number eight. Here he says, here we have two concentric circles. Concentric circles means their center is the same point. So this is a smaller circle, okay? And this is the bigger circle. Their center is same, okay? The diagram, he says, the, the diagram shows two circles, each with the center O, A, B, C, and D are the points on the circumference of the large circle. E, F, G are the points on the circumference of the small circle. C, G, D and C, F, B are tangents to the small circle. Line A, E, O, C and F, G intersect at 90 degree at X. G O X is Y. Find each of these angles as, let me increase the size so now you can see. So this is the diagram. The question is find each of these angles as simply as possible in terms of Y. Give reasons for your answer. So basically, they are asking us to find out G E O. So they are basically asking me to find out this angle G E O. So you can see in the small circle, uh, you can see uh, this is the angle at the center, and this is.
let me show you. Let me increase the size. So, uh, this pod angle at the center is 2y. This full angle will be 2y. This angle will be angle at the circumference. That will be half of this. And you for, because this line bisects this angle, so this angle will become y by 2. So uh, you can see this angle is y. This angle will be also y. So basically, if you look at this chord gf, when the chord gf went on the center of this circle, uh, the angle subtended is 2y. So the chord when went to the circumference of the small circle, this angle will be basically y. This angle will be basically y. But because this line bisects this angle, so that's why it will be y by 2. This angle will be y by 2. So the G E, uh, you can say O, that angle will be how much? It will be y by 2. The reason is that the angle at the center is 2 times angle at the circumference, but this procedure I have shown you. Okay, then uh, this answer is right. Let me show you the answer. So this is question number 8, and uh, it's uh, A first part. So where we have question number 8, A first part, now we are going to the next part. He says, find the GCX. So let's have a look where, where is the GCX. The GCX angle is where? The GCX angle is where? So the GCX. So basically they are asking you find out this angle. You know, this is tangent to this circle. So this angle is 90. The tangent makes 90 degree angle with the with the radius there. So this is 90, this is y, this is the angle which they are asking you to find out. So it will be not that difficult. So GCX plus 90, I'm, I'm going like this, y, 90, and this question is quite, this is the question, this angle is question, GCX, okay. So GCX will be 90 minus y. The reason is GCX plus 90 plus y is equals to 180. So the GCX will be equals to 180 minus y minus 90, and that will be 90 minus y. The tangent makes 90 degree angle with the and the tangent make 90 degree angle with the radius, and the sum of the triangle is uh, 180. So you have to write these reasons. Okay. So hopefully you understand. Okay, then he says find the DAB angle. So let's see where is the DAB angle. So basically they are asking me to find out this whole angle. So they basically want me to find out this whole angle. So I can find this angle and the same angle will be here. Okay, so then I can add them up. So it's not a difficult thing. So you see, I know this angle, I know this angle, I can find this angle. Once I know this angle, then I will double it. So it will be uh, DAB angle. Okay, so the DAC plus 90 plus 90 minus Y is equal to 180. This angle is 90 minus Y, this angle is 90, this angle is question, okay? Because it's a big right angle triangle. So DAC plus 90 uh, plus uh, uh, 90 minus y is equals to 180. So you will have DAC equals to 180 minus 180 plus y. So the DAC angle will be y. The DAB angle will be two times the angle of DAC, so 2y. So DAB angle is 2y. You see uh, why this angle is 90? Because you know this is the diameter of the big circle. So the angle D is 90. The reason is that the angle in the semicircle is 90 degree. I know this angle, then I found this angle, then I doubled it. DAB I found, okay? So this is how it is done. You will have to write the logic also. So I hope you understand. Angle in the semicircle is 90 degrees. So this is how this is done. A little, this one is a little heavy question. Complete the sentence. The triangle EGC is congruent to the triangle. 
So they are saying E G C. So congruent to this will be E F C, I think. I hope. E F C, yeah. You see this side, this side, this side, this side, both the tangents are equal. Both these angles will be equal. So this side will be common. So he says prove that the triangle uh, ADC is similar to, to the triangle OG, uh, the triangle OGC. Uh, Give a reason for each statement. So basically they are asking us, they are asking you to write uh, triangle ADC. What is, where is ADC? ADC, this big triangle. Okay, and OGC, OGC, why they will be uh, similar. This angle is 90, this angle here is 90. This angle is common in both the triangles. So the two angles in those triangles are common. So angle ADC and the angle OGC both are equal to 90 degree. So right angle in the semicircle. This is just one reason. And tangent makes 90 degree with the radius. Okay, DCA and the o, GCO, they are common angles. So the triangle ADC is similar to the triangle OGC. The reason is angle-angle similarity test. The reason is angle-angle similarity test. Okay. Okay, so we are going to the next part. He says, what special type of quadrilateral is AOGD? AOGD. These two sides will be parallel because this angle is 90. This angle is also 90. So they are parallel lines. And these two sides are not parallel. So they are making a trapezium. So the O. AOGD is a trapezium. So our answer is right. Then he says, uh, find the ratio. Their question is, find, find the ratio. That is the E part. Find the ratio. Area of the triangle OGC and the area of the triangle ADC. Area of the triangle OGC and ADC. You know, this side is radius and this is two radius because this is the diameter of the big circle. This is the radius of the big circle. So because they are similar to each other, so the areas ratio will be equals to uh, the square of the ratio of their areas, uh, their side, sorry. So one triangle is side is only capital R, the radius of the big circle. I, I just named it capital R. Okay. And the other triangle in that, the same side is 2R. It's the diameter of that big circle. So R square, R square cancel. So you will left with the one ratio four because both the triangles are similar to each other. So the ratio of their areas is equal to the square of the ratio of their sides. It will be one ratio four. One ratio four is the right answer, sir. Okay. Now their next question is find the area of the triangle OGC and area of the quadrilateral ABCD. OGC and ABCD. So you know the area of this triangle and the area of this small triangle. If you double the area of this big triangle, you will get the area of that quadrilateral OBCD. Okay, so we know the area of the OGC is one and it is, it is two. So if you double this, this triangle, that will be that quadrilateral. So one ratio eight, one ratio eight. If you double this triangle, you will get the ABCD triangle, uh, sorry, quadrilateral. So that's why I have doubled this area. So it's one ratio eight. The, the ratio between the areas will be one ratio eight, one ratio eight. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So we are going to the next question. The next question is question number nine. It's a part. He says the ventilation shaft of a tunnel is in the shape of a cylinder. The cylinder has a radius of 0 0.4 meter and the length 15 meter. Calculate the volume of the cylinder. So the radius is given. The length of the cylinder is given. You can find the volume. The volume of the cylinder is pi r square h. So you see pi r. 
volume is equal to pi r square h. So volume is equal to pi multiplied 0 0.4 square multiplied 15. So when you do this in your calculator, you get 7.54. 7.54 is the right answer, sir. This is question number nine and it's a part. We are right. This is my solution. Okay, we are going to the next part. Uh, question number nine is B part. He says the diagram shows the cross section of the tunnel. The cross section of the tunnel is a major segment of a circle center O. The radius of the circle is 4.5 meter and the angle AOB is 110. Calculate the area of the cross section of this tunnel. You know, uh, if you know this angle is 110, so how much will be this angle? This angle will be, I think, uh, 250. So I'll find the area of this sector. I will find the area of this uh, triangle. I will add them up and that will be the area of that whole thing. So this is a four marks question. Question number nine is B part. Let me show you very simple, simple, straightforward question. Okay. So reflex angle AOB will be equal to 360 minus 110. And that will be 250 degrees. The area of the cross section will be area one plus area two, where the area one is that sector and the area two is that triangle. Area of the sector will be theta by 360 pi r square plus one by two. Uh, area of the triangle will be one by two into r into r into the sine of the phi. So you will have 250 divided by 360 multiplied pi multiplied 4.5 square plus one by two into 4.5 into 4.5 into sine of 110. So when you do this calculation, you get to 53.7. This is a four marks question. 53.7 is the right answer, sir. So hopefully you know how this is done. This is how this is done. You can look at the solution. Question number nine, C part. The length of the tunnel is 1750 meter. The car drives through the tunnel at an average speed of 45 kilometer per hour. Work out the time the car takes to travel through the tunnel. Give your answer in minutes and seconds. Okay. The distance is given in meters and the speed is given in kilometer per hour. So when you divide them, you get uh, the time. Uh, distance divided by the speed is time, but uh, the unit must be the units must be consistent with each other. So because this is paper two, the calculator is allowed. So what I will do, I will convert that distance into uh, kilometers. So seventeen hundred and fifty meter divided by one thousand, it will be one point seven five zero kilometer. To divide with forty five, you will have uh, that is the speed forty five kilometer per hour. You will get zero point zero three eight 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 hours. Multiplied with the 60, you will have 2.333 uh, uh, minutes. So multiply 0.333 with this further 60, and you will have 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So 2 minutes and 20 seconds is the right answer, sir. 2 minutes and 20 seconds. This is the solution, how this is done. Okay. The diagram shows the positions of tunnel entrance T and two road junctions P and Q on the horizontal ground. I know this side, QT, I know the PT, I know this angle. The Q is due north of the P and T is on a bearing of 62 uh, from P. PT is 450 and the QT is 720 meter. Calculate the bearing of the T from Q. So basically, he is asking me to find out this angle. Okay. So I can find out this angle. First of all, I will find out this angle. By using the law of sine, I can find this angle. Let me show you. So what I'm going to do is... Okay. So... Sine of, let me say this is theta. So sine of theta divided by 450, law of sine I'm using, sine rule is equals to sine 62 divided by 720. So sine theta will be equals to 450 multiplied by sine 62 divided by 720. So sine theta will be equals to 0.5518. Theta will be equals to sine inverse of 0.5518 and that will be 33.49. Now the bearing of, once I know this angle, the bearing of the T from Q will be from here to here, it is 180, so you have to remain 
less than uh, 33.49 degrees from 180. That will be the bearing of the T from Q. 180 minus 33.49 and that is 146.51. So 146.5 is the answer. So we are done with the question number nine. This is how this is done. Question number nine. And we are now going to the next question. That is the question number eight. Uh, so question number so now we are on question number 10. A rectangular picture, A, B, C, D, is placed inside a rectangular frame. So here you have, uh, uh, this is the picture, this is a frame. This length is, this width is X. The length A, B of uh, the picture is three times its height, uh, which is X. Okay, so this is X and this is uh, uh, three times of the X. So this is A, B is three X. So this outer dimension will be x uh, plus 4, and this dimension will be x uh, 3x plus 4. Let me show you from here the diagram I have. I have. So this dimension is x, the height. This is 3x. So this outer dimension will be 3x plus 4. Why 4? Because 2 on this side, 2 on this side. So this is 3x plus 4. This side will be x plus 4. Now, the question is the length AB of the picture is 3 times its height x and the width of the frame is 2 centimeters. The total area of the picture and the frame is 476 centimeters square. Form an equation in x and show that it simplifies to this. Okay. So, what I am going to do is uh, the outer dimensions, uh, I will multiply them. So, that will give me the area of this whole rectangle. So x plus 4 multiply 3x plus 4, and that is 476. So you will have 3x uh, 3x squared and uh, plus 4x plus 12x plus 16 equals to 476. So 3x squared plus 16x plus 16 minus 476 is equal to 0. So you will have 3x squared plus 16x minus 460 equals 0. So this was the equation which you have to show. Hopefully you understand, hopefully you understand how these dimensions are written. So this was that the first part. So we have done it correctly. Okay, then we go to the next part and that was a four marks. So now the B part is a three marks. It says solve this equation. Uh, 3x squared plus 16x minus 460 equals zero and find the value of the x, simple. So we will apply the quadratic formula here. We are going to apply the quadratic formula. You know the quadratic formula is uh, here the a, the coefficient of the x squared is 3, the coefficient of the x is 16, and the constant term is minus 460. The quadratic formula is x is equals to minus b plus minus under root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Substitute the value of the a, b, and the c here. And when you will do this calculation, at the end you will have two options. X will be equals to minus 16 plus 76 equals to divided by 6 equals to, and that will be 10. And the second option will be X is equals to minus 16 minus 76 equals to divided by 6 equals to, and that will be minus 15.3. So the X values will be minus 15.3 and the 10. So the X values are minus 15.3 and 10. So you can see this answer is right. Okay, so this is the solution. You can pause the video if you want more time with it. Okay, then their question is find the height and the length of the frame. The, the height of the frame is x plus 4 and the length of the frame is 3x plus 4. The Which value of the x I will use? This positive value, negative value I cannot use uh, because, you know, the, the length cannot be negative. The height cannot be negative. So the height of the frame is x plus 4, so it will be 10 plus 4, that is 14 centimeter. 
The length of the frame is 3x plus 4. So it is 3 into 10 plus 4, that is 34. So the 30, 14 and the 34. So our answer is right, sir. Okay, so the D part, uh, we are going to the D part now. He says the frame is made from wood. The wood is five millimeter thick. The mass of one centimeter cube of the wood is 0 0.7 gram. Calculate the mass of the wood used in the frame. So three marks question. So I know the the volume and the the area of the frame, which is made of wood, is will be a two minus a a one minus a two. A one is the area of that full rectangle, the big rectangle. Area two is the area of that uh, photo there. So it will be fourteen into thirty four minus ten into thirty. So four hundred and seventy six minus three hundred. So one seventy six centimeter square is the area. So the volume of the wood will be the area of the wood multiplied by the thickness of the wood. And uh, but the thickness is in millimeters and the area is in centimeters square. So make their units same. So what I will do, I will divide the five millimeter with 10. It will be converted into centimeter. So the volume of the wood will be, you know, uh, uh, 176 multiplied 5 divided by 10. It will be 88 centimeter cube. The density of the wood is given. It is 0 0.7 grams per centimeter cube. So our volume volume of the wood is 88 centimeter cube. So what is the mass? The mass is equal to density multiply volume. So you will have 0 0.7 multiply 88 and that will be 61.6 grams. 61.6 gram is the answer, sir. 61.6 gram is the right answer. You can look at the marking scheme. So this is how we have done this. Let me reduce the size so you can see. Uh, now the whole this part is showing up on your screen. Hopefully you understand this, how this is done. Okay, so now we are going to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is question number 11. And here we have a pyramid. In the center of the pyramid, we have this uh, post, which is YPX. So he says, so here we have a vertical mast. Here we have a vertical uh, mast XY is positioned on horizontal ground. The mast is uh, supported by four cables attached to the mast, mast at P and to the ground at points A, B, C, and D. Y is the center of the square A, B, C, D. Uh, P, Y is seven. Uh, 0.50 meter. The vertical height of this uh, pyramid, you can say, is uh, from P to Y is 7.50 meter. Given that, that the AB is 3, this is a square, ABCD is a square, okay? The side of the that square AB is 3.65 meters, so the BC is also 3.65 meter. Show that, we have to show a y is 2.58 meter, correct to three significant figures, the three marks question. Okay, the method is very simple. I will uh, apply Pythagoras on the ABC triangle. It's a, it's a right angle triangle. I will find the value of the AC. Then I will divide the AC with the two and that will give me the value of the A y. This is the strategy for this question. So let me increase the size of this solution, okay. Now I will apply the ABCD is the square, which is the base of that pyramid shape. So 3.65, 3.65, apply Pythagoras on them, find the value of the AC. So AC square is equals to AB square plus BC square. So AC square will be equals to 3.65 square plus 3.65 square. So AC square will be equals to 26.645. So the AC takes square root on both the sides. You will have 5.16. Now I know the value of the AC. I will divide the AC with the two. Y is the midpoint of the AC. So the AY will be equal to half of the AC and that will be one by two of the 5.16 and that is 2.58. So this was what you have to show. Hopefully you understand this part. Okay, then he says calculate the length of the one of the cables used to support the mast. So I want to find out the length of this cable. I know the value of the AY. I know the value of the PY. It's a right angle triangle. I can apply Pythagoras and I can find the value of the AP. Now you can see the AYP is a right angle triangle. This AY is 2.58. The PY is 7.5 meter. I will apply the Pythagoras here. 
So the AP whole square will be equals to AY whole square plus PY whole square. So the AP whole square will be equals to 2.58 square plus 7.5 square. So the AP whole square will be 62.91. Uh, Take square root on both the sides. So the AP will be equal to 7.93 meters. So 7.93 meter is the answer for the AP. 7.93 is the answer for the AP. Okay, so this 7.93 is the right answer, sir. Okay, so the next part is, uh, yeah, the B part is done. Question number 11, it's uh, uh, C part we have, it says calculate the APB. The A, A, P, B, so I will take this triangle out. A, P, and P, B, they both are equal to each other. They are the length of those cables. So the APB angle I can find out. I know the AB side, that is 3.65. I know the AP, that is 7.93. PB is also same cable, uh, same length of the cable. So that is 7.93 also meters. So now I'm going to apply the law of cosine. The law of cosine is cos of the APB angle will be equals to B square plus A square minus P square divided by the two into A into B. So the cos of the APB angle will be 7.93 square plus 7.93 square minus 3.65 square. And in the denominator, you will have 2 into 7.93 into 7.93. So the cos of the APB will be equal to 0 0.894. This cos, when it comes to this side, it will become cos inverse. So the angle APB will be equal to the cos inverse of the 0 0.894. That will be 26.6. 26.6. 26.6 is the right answer. They have used the law of cosine, but we have used the law of uh, cosine. So it is 26.6, and that is the right answer, sir. Okay, now we are going to the 11, question number 11, and it's uh, C part. We are done now. We are on its uh, D part. He says the angle of the elevation of the X from A is 77.0 degree. Calculate the height of the x, y of the mast. Okay. So basically, uh, the angle of elevation from A of the x is 77 degrees. I know A, y. I know, if I know this angle, which is A, x, y triangle. And if I know the x, A, y angle, that's 77. I can very easily find out the height x, y. So here you have, this is that triangle. I know this side is 2.58 meters. This angle of elevation from A of the X is 77 degrees. So I can find out the XY height. The XY height will be, uh, you know, this is 10, 77.0. This is the base. This is the angle. The perpendicular is the question. So the tan theta is equals to the perpendicular by base. So 10, 77.0 will be XY divided by 2.58 xy will be equals to 2.58 multiplied tan 77 and xy will be equals to 11.18 meter 11.2 meters basically 11.2 meter is the right answer sir then their question is they want me to find calculate the angle of the elevation of the x from the midpoint of the ab Midpoint of the AB is uh, this point here. Let me say this is the midpoint. So from this midpoint to Y will be half of the BC. And I know the height, then I can find the angle of the elevation. So the midpoint uh, of the AB. So the MY distance will be half of the 3.65. So that will be 1.825. And then this is that that triangle x y height is we just found it 11.18 or 11.2 you can say and this angle of elevation i want to find this side is 1.825 so tan of theta will be equal to the perpendicular base that is 11.18 divided by 1.825 so theta will be equal to tan inverse of 6.126 and that will be 80.73 so the theta is 80.73 so 80.73 is the right answer, sir. Let me reduce the size so you can see this whole page together. So this is how we have solved this, okay? So we are done with the question number 11, and this paper is also completed. 
So, uh, my dear, dear uh, students, uh, today we have done, uh, you know, uh, October, November 2017, two, two paper. And this paper, you know, was paper two. This was from the zone two. In this video, I have presented you the solution of this paper to the best of my knowledge and my abilities. I have, I have tried to write the solutions and I have also tried to describe the process, solutions, calculations, formulae. So I hope that this video will be helpful to you. If you find this video useful, if you think that this video can be helpful to your class fellows, your junior students, your teachers, please share the link of this video with them. Uh, post the link of this video onto your Facebook, onto your Twitter account, onto your LinkedIn, onto your uh, uh, WhatsApp groups, and onto your X, onto your TikTok, wherever it is possible, onto your Instagram. Because you see, when you do this, this helps me to promote my channel. And I will be able to continue this, uh, uh, this, this work. The purpose of this work is to provide the solution of the Cambridge O-Levels Mathematics paper online, free of cost for everyone. If you have YouTube and you have internet and you have a smartphone or you have a smart television, by sitting at your home, uh, you can practice these uh, papers. Um, I, I think that this will be very helpful for those students and for their parents and for their teachers also. So please uh, subscribe my channel. Thank you very much for taking your time and watching this video. Your support is very important for me. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you all. And one thing is very important that being a human, it's possible that I sometimes make errors while I'm speaking, while I'm recording, while my internet goes up and down. We do not have too much uh, good uh, gadgets. We do not have uh, editing skills. We only have the skills of mathematics. It's uh, it's, it's just uh, it's just uh, uh, you know uh, I'm trying to make videos so that it can be helpful for for people around the globe. So thank you very much for your support. Have a good day. God bless you all. Keep studying hard.